y'all. We're here for Designing Yearbooks Part 2. Now, I'm working today in Sanderson High School's yearbook because this is a plan that the advisor and I built together, and I thought showing it to you uh, might be helpful. So the first thing that I want to show you, I'm pasting this in from earlier, is the base of their design. Now, all of these little color blocks, don't let them freak you out because we're not actually going to put them in their book. I know that's kind of scary, but we did want to start with some spacing. And so the first thing we've done is we've put in the content that is going to be on every single one of their pages, or at least every single one of their weekly pages. They will all have a vertical and a horizontal bar. They will all have five picture boxes, each with the date of that particular day, and they will all have the month listed. Now they have chosen a color scheme, so each student will be allowed to change the color of these bars, these gray bars, to match what's happening on their spread, as long as they stay within the color scheme chosen by the staff. So these crazy color boxes here are there for, again, for spacing. We want to make sure that we are going to maintain an eye line. So we've got that kind of going on right here. Um, and we'll, we'll tweak all the spacing perfectly before we're done. But basically what this is going to do is allow them to build a module design. We don't know what's going to happen week to week until we get to that week. And so when you begin to plan your week and you're in your planning stages, and you say, well, we really want to do a personality profile this week, or we really need lots of interviews this week, or we really need um, very, very little has happened this week, so we're just going to do a couple of bigger stories. Um, then you're going to want to start to think through what do we need our spread to look like in order to feature the stories we're covering. Now, we don't want to just let the kids go haphazard designing because then nothing will match. But we also don't want to just give them a set layout if the layout doesn't fit the content for that week. So that's where these crazy color boxes come in. We've blocked off some spaces that can be manipulated as needed. So the students will start with this and then they can make choices. Let's say they don't have a big story this week. They have a lot of little stories. They could get rid of the green box and then they could copy and paste these and have a couple of more small stories up here. Or, I'm just going to undo, visually if they would like to change things up. Um, instead of having this vertical design, we can take that out, we can take this out, we can move the green down here, and then we can add an orange up here. And then if you wanted to put another green here, you could. You could put another orange and another yellow. It really depends on your week and where you're hoping to go with your design and the content that you have to cover. Now, once you've blocked out your spacing, you're going to want to use click and goes. Now, these click and goes are in the design tab, in custom, and in my click and goes. Now, these are click and goes that this advisor and I designed to go in their book. And I'll show you at the end how we designed these. But each one of these is labeled green one, green two, green three. So these are all designed to fit in the exact space that we've blocked out for the green box. We also have choices for orange, purple, and yellow. So now when I have prepared what I'm going to cover for the week, and I know I really want a poll, I can choose a yellow poll and I can drag and drop it into the yellow space and then I delete that yellow box and part one of my design is done. Now maybe up here I wanted to do um, a he said she said. So this is a design that they've made. We're going to drag and drop it onto the page. It fits in that yellow spacing perfectly. We can delete that yellow box. When we change the color of this bar to fit our theme I don't really know what colors they've picked, but we're going to go with this blue. And there you go. Now I can ungroup and then I'm able to manipulate these as needed. And now let's try a purple one. So let's say we go with purple number three. You can give them as many choices as you want to or as few choices as you want to. So there's purple number three. Ungroup that. And let's have a look at some of these greens. 
because I've got the green on the right side of the page, I'm going to choose green 1 as opposed to green 2 because green 2 would give me trapped text. And I think you all know I hate trapped text. So let me drag green 1 in. Now my text is hanging off the edge of the page. Delete that green box and then I can ungroup this and begin to work. I need an orange and I think I'm going to choose this orange right here because I like that funky little angle. So let's drag and drop, delete the orange, and then here we have one more yellow. Um, and one thing I don't think we've done much is a student profile. So let's drag and drop that in there, get it in the right place. And we have the basics of a really good layout. It matches the rest of the theme in the rest of the book, but the students were given some choice. Now I would want to tweak this a little bit to make sure your eyeline is solid, to make sure everything's in the exact right place, but it gives you a starting point. So let's go up here and look and see what they've done. Check this out. They've dropped in their colors. They've dropped in their layouts. How fun is that? Now you'll notice he said, she said is in the same place, but this was actually over here on the right side when I did it. And they may have chosen a similar purple mod, but they chose a completely different orange mod and they put it in a different place. I love how this gives your students choice, but it keeps the continuity of the book as you go. So, Let's talk about how you make these mods. I've got to put a space, a green box is my space that I'm allowed to have. And I can then build my designs right into that space. So if I go to art and image frame and I drag and drop in whatever I want to have in here, Let's add in some text. We'll just copy and paste this for now. And let's see, what else do we want to put in there? Let's do this thing right here. I don't know why, it just felt like fun. So I'm gonna pop that in. All right, now, in order to say this is a click and go, I'm gonna delete the green box I'm going to select everything that was in the green boxes space and I'm going to go to file, save as click and go. It's then going to prompt me to enter the name of my new click and go. Now that was a green box so I'm going to name it green because we're going to make it easy on the students. They need to know which designs fit in which space. Now I'm not actually going to save this because that's pretty ugly but I want you to see how this works. So when we hit save, it would then populate in the designs and then the my click and goes, which is at the top under custom. Then you would have that you could click and drag on any spread. I hope this helps you understand a little bit about how you can manipulate your designs in a way that fit this weekly coverage um, and still maintain some semblance of order throughout your book. If you have any questions, as always, just reach out to us. We are here to help and we look forward to seeing what you come up with.